Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. Happy Friday. I woke in today. Got the dawn today, you know. Four o'clock, four thirty, sitting like that. that like button let's try to hit at least 500 likes for a part two of this series and let us know who we should have included in the comments down below but we got a lot to cover so for now let's get right into this one it's a spicy list i'm wearing my red share peppers read it baby starting us off at number 10 we got robin thick hey 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 you guys remember when that song blurred lines to all you would ever hear every day regardless of where you went i do unfortunately and around that time robin thick was on every talk show every major concert all over the place performing that song it seems he took a lot more credit than he should have because marvin gaye's family sued him for stealing marvin gaye's song got to give it up it's a classic give it a listen Ooh, while in court thick was questioning if he had created the track thick explained that quote to be honest that's the only part where i was high on vicodin and alcohol when i showed up at the studio so my recollection is when we made the song i thought i was i i wanted to be more involved than i actually was by the time nine months later it became a huge hit and i wanted credit so i started kind of convincing myself that i was a little more part of it than i was and i because i didn't want him i guess referring to pharrell i wanted some credit for this big hit but the reality is is that for Pharrell had the beat, and he wrote almost every single part of the song. So he blamed Pharrell. Nice. The whole thing was weird, though, as Pharrell was asked if Marvin Gaye had influenced his music while being questioned in court, to which the producer's response was, I quote, he's an Aries. I respect him. I'm an Aries. Nice. And number nine, Tristan Thompson. I mean, he's been caught multiple times cheating on Khloe Kardashian over the years they've been together. It was reported that while Khloe was three what? months pregnant in 2017, Thompson was cheating on her. her. And this was confirmed when TMZ oh, posted this. video footage of him with two women. They just so happened to post it two weeks prior to the birth of the couple's first child. But then just days before Khloe's due date, Thompson was seen again with 28-year-old model Lanny Blair in New York while his team at the time was playing the Knicks. It seems the couple was going to work things out. Then reports came up that Thompson was cheating again, this time with Khloe sister's best friend. Confusing, I know, but it was just Kylie's friend that Tristan was apparently hooking up with. Not like, oh, it was just not a big deal, I'm saying, to clarify. And then the friend Jordan Woods did admit that Thompson kissed her one night and she stayed quiet about it, but it was not her fault whatsoever. Chloe addressed it on their awful show and it was good for the ratings. And this doesn't even include any of the more recent drama, which I don't have time for. Moving on to number eight, Winona Ryder. If you're a Stranger Things fan, then you know Ryder as Will's mother. Others may know her from the numerous films and TV shows she's been in, or her previous relationship with Johnny Depp years ago. I the way back in 2001 she was arrested for stealing over five thousand dollars worth of clothes and accessories at Saks fifth avenue in beverly hills she didn't land any work in hollywood until 2006 almost like she was blacklisted but it seems for her this was a blessing in disguise speaking with interview in 2013 she said i quote that thing that happened i was starting to have some trouble before that i think a lot of people think that that is what sort of sent me off in another direction but i was actually starting to have some trouble a few years before in a weird way it was almost like the best thing that could have happened because i'd never asked myself the question before of, is it okay if I'm not going to act? Is there anything else? Because that was all that I really knew. At number seven, Conor McGregor, one of the biggest names in sports, the highest paid athlete of 2021, and the face of the UFC, has found himself in legal trouble Blue, oh, once. Hey. Of course, he was caught on film throwing the metal dolly at a bus containing a handful of UFC fighters, injuring some, as well as at the time he hit a man at a bar. Video showed McGregor pouring everyone shots of his proper 12 whiskey, and one older man moving the shot away. McGregor appeared to insist he try one, which the man denied. At this point, everyone really raised a shot or a glass, except the man who was staring at McGregor the whole time. It seems after they all took the shot, McGregor just hit the man with a left punch before getting pushed out by his entourage or friends. The man didn't seem all that phased by the punch, which is truly incredible. Speaking on the situation, McGregor said, I quote, I was in the wrong. That man deserved to enjoy his time in the pub without having it end the way it did. I tried to make amends and I made amends back then, but it doesn't matter. I was in the wrong. I must come here before you and take accountability and take responsibility. I owe it to my mother, my father, my family. I owe it to the people who trained me in martial arts. That's not who I am. That's not the reason why I got into martial arts or studying combat sports. The reason I got into it was to defend against that type of scenario. At number Boom! Tasty. Sweet. Delicious. Check it out. 
it out. It's free to download. Play now. What? What happened? What do you mean? What you? Oh, good eyes, Nicole. You're welcome. What do you mean? Mask. You are you are you a mask? Mm -hmm. Why? <laughs> my new flagship, cheering on my fleet as it takes out your starbase. Excuse me? You left your base unprotected. If I would, I'd lock myself in the brink for gross negligence. If you were me, you'd have anticipated the ambush I'm about to launch right behind you. What were you saying about gross negligence? Now, just hold on a minute. Carl, maybe you should stick to medicine. You'll be needed in sick base soon. That's a low blow, so be quick. Low blow. story or who Williams is, and I debated including him for a bigger celebrity, but when you hear his story, you'll see why I included him. A journalist for NBC who was covering the war in Iraq back in 2003 on location had made claims the helicopter he was flying in was hit by an RPG and had to make an emergency landing. Turns out that wasn't the case, and instead the helicopters way ahead of him were attacked and had to make an emergency landing. Williams' helicopter did make an emergency landing due yeah, to I'm the for my and, and a sandstorm, and after being exposed yeah, by the soldiers so and pilots that were on the helicopter that was under fire, Williams would be suspended from NBC. This was in 2015, 12 years later after the oh, Bow Wow is on my flight to New York. But on Instagram, he posted a picture of a private jet. It was also later discovered the photo of the jet Moss shared on his Instagram was from a luxury rental website and cropped looked like it was a photo that he took. This also spawned the Bow Wow challenge, which was a whole other thing in itself. Really wild times. At number two, Bill Gates. After it was revealed that Bill and Melinda Gates would be getting a divorce after 27 years together, more news would break that Bill was having an affair with an employee. As per the Wall Street Journal in 2019, a female employee at Microsoft told the company that back in 2000, she and Bill had a sexual relationship initiated by him that lasted for years. While Microsoft's board invested the claim, they wanted Bill to step down, which he did in March of 2020, prior to them completing the investigation. A spokesperson for Gates said the decision, I quote, was in no way related to this matter. In fact, he had expressed interest in spending more time in his philanthropy, starting several years earlier. However, Gates did admit to having the affair with the spokesperson explaining there was an affair almost 20 years ago, which ended amicably. At number one, Amber Heard she pooped on Johnny Depp's bed. She lied about a lot of things. I mean, I can't go through it all. You guys know if you've been watching the channel for a while that we've covered it over the years. This has been going to the courts for some time now, and we've got dozens of videos and marathons covering all of it. I'm just referring to the poop situation, which, even though a judge declared it wasn't her or decided it wasn't her, there was a maid who was there that testified that it was not dog poop. Human poop. I mean, I don't think Amber will ever admit it was her, but I can't say for certain it was her. I don't know. I just feel like that's something she would do. Like, I don't know. That's all for this one, guys. Let us know your thoughts on this one down below. For now, let's do some comment replies from the video. Bill Gates caught cheating. H3H3 sued for 50 million. I have a new video for you guys because we're taking a deep dive into. This episode is sponsored by Ubisoft. What is going on, everybody? My name is John Solo, and 10 years ago this month, the very first Thor movie came out in theaters. Now, admittedly, I didn't actually go see it in theaters because to me, there just wasn't any appeal to seeing an obnoxiously handsome blonde man swing a hammer around. But I had no idea what else I was missing out on. Because before seeing it, all I knew about Norse mythology was that Thor had a hammer and Odin had a raven. And even that knowledge, I shamefully have to credit to Ron Burgundy. <gasps> oh! Great Odin's Raven! So, when I finally did check out Thor, I was amazed. Rainbow bridges, cities of gold, ice giants getting their heads smashed in, Natalie Portman. It was everything I wanted and more. I like it. I know, that's great, right? Another! <coughs> but the character who stuck out the most to me and who I so desperately wanted to get more screen time was Heimdall, the lone gatekeeper to Asgard. He could hear and see anywhere in the Nine Realms. He controlled the Bifrost, had a badass suit of armor, and was played by Idris Elba. Without a doubt, he was one of my favorite characters in the MCU. So now that I'm much better versed in the world of Norse myth, I thought it'd be cool to compare and contrast both versions of him. Only I'm sad to say that his role 
in the Thor movie reflects his role in the Norse ethos, as in, it just left me wanting more. You'll see what I mean soon enough, but first I want to say thanks to this week's sponsor, Ubisoft. If you are anything like me, then you just can't get enough mythology in your life. Movies, shows, comics, video games, I don't care what format it's in, if it's mythology related, I want it injected into so my close. face. And that is why Kinda. I'm so ecstatic to be partnering with Ubisoft this week. From right now through June 2nd, they're having a massive sale on all of their most legendary titles, including those based in mythology. I personally just picked up Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Immortals Phoenix Rising, two games I've been wanting since the release, and that I definitely plan on streaming for you in the future. Because come on, how fun would it be to play through these live and break down all of the Norse and Greek myths they took inspiration from. But the deals don't end there. You can save up to 80% on earlier Assassin's Creed titles, Rainbow Six, the Far Cry series, and more. And on top of that, you can take an extra 20% off your card just by entering the promo code LEGEND20. I know, the discounts don't stop. The best part is, all you've got to do to take advantage is click the link in the video description. It'll take you right to the Ubisoft store where the legendary sale is going on right now through June 2nd. Just make sure to use that promo code legend 20 for an extra 20 percent off your entire car and remember when you're reveling in all that mythological goodness that i'm the one who sent you yeah ubisoft wanted to sponsor me i'm just as baffled as you are but now it's time for us to jump into it solo fam if you haven't already be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons if we could get at least nine likes on this video i'd feel blessed by the gods themselves and without further ado the messed up origins of heimdall You okay, Aaron? Hey, aren't you moved a bowl? to Heimdall's abilities and responsibilities, the MCU got a lot right, but they left out a ton of specifics, so I think the best place for me to start this breakdown would be from the very top. Heimdall, or Heimdaller as it's actually pronounced, is a god who's chiefly responsible for standing guard against potential threats like frost giants invading Asgard, as well as keeping watch for the onset of Ragnarok. I know, it's a pretty important job, so you'll be happy to hear that he is well equipped for it. According to the Guild Beginning, the first story in the Prozetta, one of our two major resources for Norse myth, he possesses great wisdom, foreknowledge, and his other senses are as acute as can be. Heimdall needs less sleep than even a bird so he can stand watch for as long and as often as he needs to. He can see a hundred miles around him, whether it's night or daytime, and has hearing so sensitive that he can pick up the sound of grass growing as well as wool on the back of sheep. Like many of the other Norse gods, he also has a noble steed, a horse named Goldhopper, or Goldpom, which he said to have ridden to Baldur's funeral. We don't know the exact significance of the horse's name, but it could mean that it was gold in color, or maybe it had a saddle made of gold. Whichever one it was, I'm sure it looked majestic as hell alongside his gold teeth. Oh, that's right. Didn't I mention your boy has a grill? Now, as you would imagine, when the job is paramount and specialized as Heimdall's, he needs a sweet office to do his business from preferably one in the corner with a view. This is where him and Bjorg, or Heaven's Hills, comes in. It's located on the edge of heaven where the burning rainbow bridge known as the Bifrost meets the sky. And while we don't know too much about it, I can confirm that Heimdall has a massive storage of the world's finest mead there. Not confirming from personal experience, unfortunately, because Odin says as much in a poem called Grimness Mall. When it comes to Heimdall's parentage, he's referred to as the son of nine mothers, all of whom were sisters. And if that confuses you, you're not alone. Even the Norse experts don't know how to interpret that. Does it mean Heimdall's like a phoenix and has died and been reborn multiple times to different mothers? Did they each give birth to a different piece and then assemble him like a Galador action figure? Unfortunately, we'll never know for sure. All we do know is that he was born at the edge of the earth, that each of his mothers was Jotun, and that one of them, Yarnsaxa, was also also the mother of Thor's son Magni, so there's a hint of a connection there. Now what also makes this origin story of Heimdall so confusing 
confusing is that we can't yeah. say for sure whether he's an Aesir god or Vanir god. Not only does his lineage give us nothing to work with, but depending on what poem you look at, he could be called either or both. For example, in Thrym's Kvitha, a poem where Thor's hammer is stolen by a frost giant and Heimdall suggests dressing Thor up as Freya so he can fake marry the giant and steal it back, there's a line that says Heimdall is the whitest of the Aesir and knows the future like other Vanir, so you can't help but wonder which one he is. Now as for that whitest of the Aesir bit, my initial reaction was, damn, I wonder how Idris Elba would feel about that. But it turns out that back then, the word white wasn't really used to describe skin color. It could mean attractive or handsome, it could mean old, it was sometimes used to describe someone with blonde hair. The problem is, any and all of these interpretations could be applicable to Heimdall. Again, we're just never going to know what's meant by it. But we've already covered just about all the basics of the Guardian of the Gods, so let's move on to the myths he's featured in, including his ultimate destiny at Ragnarok. So it's at this point that I've got to break your heart, Solo fan, because there actually aren't many myths that focus on Heimdall. There was at one point, actually, there was an entire poem dedicated to him that experts believe would have answered some of our most puzzling questions about the god. Like, how was he born from nine mothers? And why is a sword called Heimdall's head? The poem in question was named Heimdall Galdri, though I probably butchered that. And the only reason we're aware of its existence at hmm. all is because two lines of it are quoted in chapter 25 of the Guild Beginning. In that section, the enthroned figure of Hai, who's actually Odin in disguise, tells the also disguised King Gilki about Heimdall. Heimdall and comments that Heimdall ah. says the following lines in the poem. Offspring of nine mothers of mine, of nine sisters of mine. Uh, Isn't that amazing? Let me know, okay. The only two lines of the poem that survive, and they say the exact same thing. Gotta love it. I mean, sure, it would have been nice if he was like offspring of nine mothers of I, as well as the son of Odin, or whoever would have been his dad, but not. Nah. Okay. Let's just say